John 17. Verse 20 says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their words, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one, in where? In? So God the Father, he wants us to be one, In God the Father and God the Son. And the Son wants us to be one with God the Father and God the Son. We're one in Him. Is that understood? Don't ever think it's somehow separate. It isn't. <laughs> it's so, so simple. Just go with me to, to, uh, back to Ephesians chapter 1. Let, let's quickly go and look. Because uh, I, I want you to get all these things in your mind. You know, the whole purpose of having a conference is so you go away transformed in your mind. You need renewing in the spirit, the attitude of your mind to understand these things. Ephesians 1, we looked at you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. Let's take verse 22. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth, what? All things in. Do you realize the church of Jesus Christ is filled with all the fullness of God? It goes on and explains it. He didn't leave it so people would doubt. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. That Christ, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Why have you got to know it? That you might be filled with what? All the fullness of God. You're, boy, isn't that a great promise? Hey, Paul's writing and he's saying, hey, don't you know? The whole purpose was that you might be filled in your mortal flesh with all the fullness of God. Okay? Is that plain? Now, just in case you think I'm wrong, I'll show you other scriptures, you see, because um, uh, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. You're talking of Jesus. It says this in, in, in verse 13 of Colossians 1. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now I believe that. If you don't believe that, you're not a Christian, you're a heathen. Verse 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. There is nothing more of God <laughs> that wasn't in Christ. And when you receive, you receive God the Father, God the Son, 
got the Holy Ghost and you're filled with all the fullness of God. Is that plain? Hello? Is it really plain? Are you sure? Okay. Chapter 2. Colossians. That your hearts, verse 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love unto all the riches of full assurance of understanding in the, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 1 Timothy 3.16 without And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Amen? Amen. And that's where Jesus is. Uh, and I, I'm just so thrilled. You know, this, this conference is, if it's done nothing else, it's stirred me up. I look out on all the world and I think, our God is a good God. 